Atlanta Fire and Rescue says an unauthorized rooftop party led to a massive fire here at Bell Collier Village. The latest in their investigation coming up. Also another presidential contender to hold a rally here in Atlanta. We have a closer look at how leaders are preparing. And you know I'm going to be talking about a very crowded downtown connector for the Friday ride. But as Jonathan just mentioned, what's that impact going to be for your drive tomorrow? And what's with all the haziness in the sky? The heat and haziness will it last into the weekend? We'll talk about that and storm chances on the way. Good afternoon and welcome to 11 Alive News at 4. I'm Jonathan Martin. And I'm Jennifer Bellamy. We have a weather impact alert today for high heat, but you may have noticed that haze you heard Melissa talking about over us in the sky. So let's get you straight to our meteorologist, Melissa Nord, right now. And you know, the answer to that is not air pollution. It is actually Saharan dust coming all the way from the coast of Africa. It's traveled across the Atlantic and has arrived here in North Georgia. So we've been seeing that haze in the sky today on top of the high temperatures. That's our live camera in downtown Decatur looking towards the city of Atlanta skyline. We can also see that haze. Look at this, our camera in Zalonega. You can see the haze in the distance right at the bottom of the horizon there. So we have some dust over us right now. It's going to stick with us a little bit into tomorrow. Then it should leave us by Sunday. But in the meantime, that dust is actually helping to some thunderstorms weaken for them to weaken a little bit as they made their way into North Georgia today. We still have a couple of showers across parts of the metro. Bigger thunderstorm here, which just had a warning expire, and that's starting to push into Cleburne County there in Alabama. Some heavy rain, some lightning over I-20 near Anniston and Talladega. This will push south and east, so eventually clip uh, Randolph County as well. You'll notice here in the metro, we had bigger storms pushing into northwest Georgia, but those have really weakened. We have one little area of some heavy rain in West Cobb right now, and that might might approach Truist Park, but the dust and the heat has been the dominating, I think, weather story of the afternoon so far. Live look at our hazy airport right now. It's also been a bit breezy outside. Those west winds are sustained at 15 miles per hour. Currently 92 in Atlanta. Feels like 96, but that dust that came in actually dropped the humidity a little bit today from yesterday, and that's why we're not seeing as many of us feel like it is above 100 degrees. Current feels like temperature in Athens is 96, 96 in Atlanta, and 93 right now in LaGrange. This evening, I still expect some of those isolated and shower, uh, showers and thunderstorms to move through the area. Not everybody's going to see the rain otherwise. Temperatures will be holding in the 90s all the way until close to sunset. We'll fall back through the 80s there after that. Now, over the weekend, towards the end of the weekend, Parts of Georgia will start to be influenced by this. This is potential tropical cyclone four. We got a new track to show you. This is developing today and when this could become our next tropical system of the season named storm. That's just ahead my full forecast. Melissa, thanks so much. Breaking right now at four, investigators now revealing the cause of a fire that ripped through a five-story apartment building in Atlanta. The fire at Bell Collier Village sparked during a rooftop party nearly a week ago. And ever since then, hundreds of people have been barred from going back inside their homes to get their belongings. 11 Alive's Grace King is live from the apartments on Howell Mill Road. All right, so Grace, what can you tell us about this party? Atlanta fire investigators believe more than 100 people were at an unauthorized rooftop party when someone put charcoal on a propane grill. And that's how that fire, they believe, started on the rooftop. It spread quickly, according to investigators, in part because of a combustible rooftop deck and an unprotected roof membrane, according to firefighters. The fire chief said the failure to maintain essential fire safety measures and the presence of an unsanctioned party with hazardous equipment underscores the need for property owners to ensure compliance with safety standards. He said this created a dangerous situation for building residents and firefighters from 32 different units. Now we asked the fire department whether the building or any individuals could be held responsible for the incident. They said that part of the investigation is still ongoing, but I did speak with a landlord, a tenant attorney this afternoon about the question of liability. He said it'll likely come down to whether the inadequacies the fire department found actually violated any codes or ordinances. Live off Howell Mill Road in Atlanta, Grace King, 11 Alive News. All right, Grace, thank you so much. Still so many answers those residents are looking for. And as this breaking story develops for up-to-the-minute updates, download the 11 Alive app. It is free in your app store. Developing in southeast Atlanta, three people are in the hospital after a possible drive-by shooting. Our Bo Beth Yates is live near the intersection of Cleveland Avenue and Brownsville Road. Bo Beth, what are police saying at this hour? 
Police are telling me that this is still a very active investigation. Now, even though the scene behind me has been cleared for much of the day, this intersection was corded off as officials tried to figure out how a car riddled with bullets ended up right here. It's so scary. That's so scary. Sam Raj reacts to the shocking scene that played out in front of the gas station where he works. According to Atlanta police around noon, officers responded to the intersection of Cleveland Avenue and Browns Mill Road and found a car riddled with bullets. Upon arrival, they located several males inside of Sedan, so all suffering from gunshot wounds. Uh, three of the males were subsequently transported to Grady, where they are currently being treated. In this surveillance video of the intersection, you can see a car pulling up on Cleveland Avenue and someone inside it waving their hands. Moments later, APD pulls up. Officials say based on preliminary information, they believe the car was driving when it was shot at. They add it's likely that the incident involves multiple scenes and that the shooting may have started prior to the car getting to the intersection. It's an active investigation. We are requesting the public's assistance with locating the original incident location. If you have any information related to this incident, we are requesting the public to contact either Atlanta Police Aggravated Assault Unit or Crime Stoppers Unit. And as officials continue to investigate, those who frequent the area, like Raj, say they remain shaken up. I see the car, the uh, like red car, so that's it we've seen inside the car and a lot of police we've seen nothing else we not heard it anything and we are so scary that's scary again officials say they need your help solving this crime and they're asking anyone with information to call crime stoppers that number 404-577-TIPS live in 407, Bo Beth, thank you so much. All right, behind me, obviously, a very crowded ride already on that downtown connector. It's Friday. Folks want to get home. But let's talk about tomorrow. More dignitaries in town for traffic. President Trump getting here Saturday, arriving in Hartsfield-Jackson. You'll encounter the rolling roadblock as he's speaking at Georgia State at 5 p.m. If you're not familiar with it, get ready for every entrance and exit along the connector in both directions to be completely blocked off. You'll see a massive police presence downtown as that motorcade makes its way to Georgia State. Those doors open at 1. The event will begin at 5. Obviously, with the events that have already happened with President Trump, you will probably see a heck of a lot more uh, police presence out there. Right now, about 20, 25 minutes in each direction on the connector north and southbound. It's a full house, but the good news is no major wrecks or stalls so far. That is good. Crash, thank you. Well, the owner of the 1145 Lounge remains in jail right now, but the court proceedings aimed at shutting his club down were Two people were killed on Mother's Day, continue today without him. The city of Atlanta resumed its attempt to close the Buckhead Club for a second day. Representatives from the Fire and Rescue Department, the Office of Revenue, and other departments testified to multiple instances where they say the owner of 1145 Lounge tried to get around the law by failing to file the proper permits, file taxes, and comply with citations. Tim Recklaw is the city inspector from the Office of Buildings. He says he was called over a year ago because of a complaint was uh, a complaint that was filed about the business's patio enclosure. Multiple uh, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing work had been performed within the enclosure without permits at that time. Uh, there was evidence that the space was being occupied and used by the public. Uh, I posted the the project unsafe on the entrance door on the peach tree road sidewalk right away. Lawyers are arguing for the club's permanent closure, saying the city is trying to show a pattern of non-compliance that ultimately led to the fatal shooting death of two people on May 12th. Again, they left two young people dead and four others injured. On Thursday, owner Jabril DeFay was taken into custody because of a bench warrant for another felony case. The judge is not expected to reach a decision today, but we will keep you posted. The man accused in the disappearance of a 12-year-old girl from Gainesville will not be coming back to Georgia yet. A local district attorney delayed the extradition of Antonio Agustin Ailon because his most serious criminal offenses allegedly occurred in Ohio. Investigators say he took a young girl from her home back in May after talking with her online. Investigators searched for her for nearly two months before she was found last week with a 34-year-old. He will answer to any charges he faces in Ohio first before being brought to Georgia. 
potential trial date has now been set for the man accused of killing a nursing student on the University of Georgia campus. Jose Ibarra is accused of killing Lakin Riley back in February. 11 Live's Brittany Kleinpeter was inside the courtroom when the judge made that decision. In just a matter of months, the trial for Jose Ibarra is tentatively set to begin. The plan is to put this on the November 18th trial calendar. Lake and Riley's family sat just a few feet from Ibarra in the courtroom Friday. The man accused of brutally murdering Riley on February 22nd. Riley had gone on a run that morning and never returned home. He is now facing 10 charges, including malice murder, kidnapping, and aggravated assault with attempt to rape. On Friday, Athens Clark County Superior Court Judge H. Patrick Haggard acknowledged the timing of the date, which will fall only a week before Thanksgiving. The timing is not lost on me as far as the holiday and all of that, and that's part of my idea of getting a juror's hopefully picked the week before. I think the jury is completely seated, um, and we are starting with opening statements and evidence on the 18th. If we hustle, um, I think we could be completed um, in time. A hearing for motions by the defense is being discussed for late September or early October, but no date was finalized on Friday. Jury selection is tentatively set for November 13th. Reporting in Athens, Brittany Kleinpeter, 11 Alive News. One motion the judge will consider moving the case to another county. Ibarra's attorney says they want it moved because it will be impossible to find an impartial jury in Athens, Clark County. The United States Army announcing the death of two Georgia Army National Guard soldiers today. The Army says both died in non-combat related incidents. 23-year-old Specialist Travis Jordan Pimini was a member of the 121st Infantry Regiment in Lawrenceville. Specialist Owen James Elliott of Twin City was also 23. He was a member of the 118th Field Artillery Regiment out of Savannah. Both soldiers died on Wednesday in Baghdad. The Army says they are still investigating tonight and point out the incidents are not related. With less than 100 days left until voters choose the next president of the United States, Georgia Republicans will become for, will welcome former President Donald Trump to Atlanta tomorrow. That's right. He is set to rally them at the same location in downtown Atlanta, where Vice President and now Democratic uh, nominee, likely nominee uh, Kamala Harris, packed the House on Tuesday. 11 Alive's Doug Richards live now with a look ahead for us. Doug. Yeah, Kamala Harris held a rather rousing political rally Tuesday night in uh, downtown Atlanta, and Republicans are hoping that Donald Trump, whose rallies have kind of become part of his brand, uh, can find a way to exceed that. But uh, some state Republicans will be notably absent. Donald Trump will be at the Georgia Convocation Center Saturday, but Republican Governor Brian Kemp will not. Kemp, who hasn't shared a stage with Trump in years, has other plans, according to an aide. Vice presidential candidate J.D. Vance is expected to be at the same event in Atlanta. But Kemp's former lieutenant governor, Republican Jeff Duncan, will not. I would like to present you the ball to throw out the first pitch of the sunny die. Duncan, a former minor league baseball pitcher who made an annual baseball toss, a short-lived state senate tradition, broke with Trump after Trump urged his angry followers to visit the Capitol January 6, 2021. Duncan has been an anti-Trump fixture on CNN ever since. And if we're going to fix this party and go forward, the party that is conservative but not crazy and angry, we've got to do it without Donald Trump. But with the Republican Party embracing Trump's candidacy this year, it is now officially turning on Duncan. The Georgia GOP's chairman, Josh McCoon, posted a Friday morning note on social media telling Duncan, you're not and never will be considered a Republican ever again, promising steps to formally expel Duncan from the GOP. I think it is high time that people call out the behavior uh, of someone who's a so-called Republican. Cobb County Republican Chair Sally Grubb says expelling Duncan was overdue. She'll be attending Saturday's Trump rally and says as the party is better off without a high-profile Trump heckler. Of course, we, you know, the GOP is the big tent party. We like to uh, embrace everyone that embraces our ideals. But once your ideals change, uh, I don't think you have any choice but to call attention to those details. 
On the social media platform X, Duncan responded to McCoon's effort to kick him out of the Republican Party by saying that he sleeps well at night, having endorsed Kamala Harris for president this fall. He predicted that uh, Trump will lose to Harris in the November election, and he invited McCoon to buy his book, GOP 2.0, afterward. We are live in Midtown tonight. Back to you. Doug, thanks so much. Well, some Atlanta educators received an unexpected gift. As a school year is getting underway, 36 teachers at Benteen Elementary were given the chance to stock up on critical school supplies. Georgia's own credit union donated more than $5,000 worth of Expo markers, crayons, pencils, student snacks, and a lot more you can see. This unexpected boost is especially meaningful for Benteen Elementary, where nearly all students come from economically challenged families. We spoke to a teacher today who says this will all help teachers focus focus on nurturing young minds. We don't have to think about um, funding our own classrooms, which so many teachers do. It's great to just be able to come in and focus on instruction and building community and getting to know our kids in the early days of school. The teacher you just heard from is Jocelyn Davis, who also won Teacher of the Year at Benteen. This is Georgia's own third year surprising teachers with the supplies. They pick a different school each year. Great there. Well, some scary moments as parents woke up to a tree falling on their home and landing in their young son's bedroom. Matt Valentine was busy working at his home near McKinjan Drive, McKinjan Drive in DeKalb County when he heard the crash around 8 a.m. When he realized where it was coming from, he raced to his two-year-old son's door. Fortunately, his son was not seriously injured and is doing okay. Valentine tells us how the toddler was able to get out safely. That's the image that's seared in my head. Was going to like get him and him being in the bed, just completely covered in dust, this tree on him and thinking, can I get him out of here? He wiggled out pretty easily, but he was just covered in dust. We are so glad that was the worst of it for that young child there. The toddler was taken to the hospital to check on a bump on his head from the tree falling. Thankfully, the family has a place to stay and family support nearby. All right, let's get a check of our weather impact forecast again with meteorologist Melissa Nord as we head into the weekend. And you've been tracking some of the haze out there. A lot of haze, and you know, that's been good news for our storm coverage this afternoon. It's hit that kind of dust in the sky the storms and they've weakened a lot. This is a radar loop for the last four hours. We had some intense thunderstorms in Alabama. They have all been weakening the lightning gone here in Atlanta. I am tracking a couple of thunderstorms still in Alabama. As we go through the course of the evening, we'll see some additional thunderstorms there trying to move into our area right now, though a little bit of heavy rain and lightning there in Cleburne County. That is part of our 11 alive viewing area. A couple more showers that I'm tracking in Cobb County. And in fact, one of those showers is right over Truist Park right now. We just started to see the raindrops picking up. We had haze earlier when I was watching this camera 15 minutes ago and now we've got a few of those raindrops right now. 92 degrees in Atlanta, 96 is what it feels like outside and we do have a 721st pitch for the Braves. Not going to call it a washout, but a few more isolated showers and thunderstorms possible as we go through the course of the evening. Otherwise, those temperatures are in the 90s. Let's talk about the weather impact through the weekend. We're tracking isolated showers and storms each day, but a bigger storm that I'm tracking this weekend is not right here at home, but what's brewing in the tropics, potential tropical cyclone four, we're going to travel down towards Cuba. And this is where the center of the developing system is. This is still just a tropical low that has the potential and likely will become our next name storm of the season. But this is going to get steered northward up towards the west coast of Florida. It's being steered by two big giant areas of high pressure. So with that, the tropical moisture makes its way northward, brings some really heavy rains this weekend, flooding threat to Florida as it's likely going to stay just off the coast, but that cone of uncertainty even includes all the Tampa Bay metro area. Notice as we get into early next week, by Monday, the cone of uncertainty has this somewhere between just off the Georgia coast and into southeast Georgia, and then slowly making its way up the coast there of the Carolinas as well. So with us being on the left side of this system, we expect the most rain, the most threats from any wind and flooding. That's all going to stay closer to the Georgia coastline. For us, we likely will not see a lot of rain from the system if the track kind of holds how things are looking right now. But something that we'll be tracking over the weekend because small changes in the models over each day can mean bigger changes down the line to our local impacts here. So as of right now, it looks like we'd be on the west side of that system. Wouldn't get much rain out of it at all. Weekend forecast here closer to home. Isolated shower 
showers and storms each day. Temperatures not quite as hot. We're looking at high temperatures both Saturday and Sunday running in the low 90s. Forecast track this evening, we had those few showers and storms kind of fizzling out over us right now. A few more are developing upstream. We'll see if an isolated shower or storm could still form here and move into our area by sunset. We'll start tomorrow morning mild and dry, and then for the afternoon, fewer of us end up getting the rain. We'll go for a 30% rain chance Saturday afternoon. It's no one given area in our viewing area that could see the rain. Really, anyone could see a shower or storm. Brief heavy rain and lightning possible, but we don't expect a widespread severe weather threat for tomorrow. We'll go into Sunday. It'll be more of the same. Another mild, humid start to the day and by the afternoon, tracking a few isolated pop-up showers and thunderstorms. And again, a lot of us will squeeze by dry this weekend, but if you do get the rain, shouldn't last for the entire weekend. So for tomorrow, highs will be in the low 90s. We'll keep it that way for Sunday. We'll watch that trial tropical system near the Georgia coast on Monday. Right now we've got our rain chance at 30%. If the track wobbles west, those rain chances go go higher. If the track wobbles east, the rain chances would be lower. Heat building next week will keep temperatures there in the mid 90s. Crash. I thought you were going to break out into wobble baby, wobble baby, wobble baby. <laughs> I mean, I just I, that was a perfect opportunity. You said wobble. I a rather large get out of the way tractor trailer. A rather large piece of debris sitting in the right lane. What is that on I-20? This is is westbound at HE Home. So heads up if you're leaving downtown, heading out west, may want to consider MLK as an alternate. All right, that downtown drive, definitely a full house and the big three. Obviously, Melissa was talking about some rain out there by Truist Park, so 75 will be impacted a little bit by that, but 75 is not in bad shape. 16 minutes up through uh, Marietta, about 20 minutes heading up to Alpharetta, and about 18 minutes from the perimeter out towards 316. And there's a good look showing I-75 right there. Not a whole lot of folks out on the roads right now up there. Jennifer. All right, Crash, thank you. Well, families across Georgia are fighting to get their children back after being accused of abuse. It's a nightmare that could happen to any parent. 11 Alive News investigator Rebecca Lindstrom has been following these heartbreaking stories, exposing the hurdles that these families face as they try to clear their names and bring their children home. And the last thing I can actually remember is looking up at the staircase. My sister was there with my babies. At that point, I just lost touch with reality because I didn't know I couldn't function. You can watch the full Help That Harm series on the 11 Alive Plus app. It's available for download on your Roku, Amazon Fire, and Apple TV devices. Once you open the app, click the News tab and scroll down for the Help That Harm series. Gwinnett County Police tonight need your help identifying these two suspects. They are accused of placing a credit card skimmer on a register at a grocery store in Norcross. If you did not know, a skimmer is a device installed on card readers that collects card numbers and thieves then steal that information to make fraudulent purchases. This incident happened on June 20th at the Talpa's grocery store located on Jimmy Carter Boulevard. If you know anything about those two suspects, go ahead and call Gwinnett County Police. All right, well, a stunning loss for Metro Atlanta athlete in the 2024 Paris Olympics. Daniel Haw was eliminated shortly into qualifications. And 11 Alive's Faith Jesse caught up with him and other Georgia athletes front and center at the track today. And they are off. Day two of track and field saw a whole lot of action. The stadium was packed. And we saw some former Bulldogs and a current Bulldog who was on the track qualifying for finals. Uh, Elena Kulichenko, who is a UGA junior, she is representing Cyprus in the games, as well as former Bulldog Tatiana Gushen, who is representing Greece. Both of them are making it to the final. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. You know, when I just got into the stadium, I was shaking so bad because I was like preparing myself that it's going to be crazy, but it's insane. It's like whole stadium is packed. It's just amazing. I'm really, really excited. Uh, I've been three times in a world championship and I was out by one spot. So I came today here prepared to give it all to make it to the final. So I'm freaking excited. Yeah, and tonight our hearts are breaking for Daniel Ha. He is a Georgia native who had very high hopes in the hammer throw competition. But today he fouled out of that competition. But when he spoke to me, he said he's keeping his head up high. Honestly, the last throw felt really solid. I think it was a 77 plus over the qualification, but it was out of sector. And so it's heartbreaking, but, you know, glory to God in the highs and the lows. And we just got to live and got to learn. Yeah, 
Yeah, so both Daniel and his family, they are disappointed, but they do have high hopes. I was able to speak with his parents following his event today. They told me that they are proud of him. They are so excited for him, and they are all looking forward to L.A. in 2028. And we are proud of him still as well. Well, meanwhile, speaking of the Olympics, who could forget gymnast great Dominic Dawes and the Magnificent Seven, the team winning gold right here in 11 back in 1996, or in Atlanta, rather. I had a chance to speak with Dominique about what she thinks of the Olympics so far and Simone Biles. What I love about Simone is I just saw her do a vault. Afterward, she gave a high five to a Brazilian competitor and then continued to smile and enjoy her experience. And I think that's what's so great is back in the day in the 90s when I was competing at the 96 Olympic Games in Atlanta or 92 in Barcelona or 2000 in Sydney, we really were in the zone and had blinders on and forgot about the fact that these competitors are very much our friends. And I love seeing that now. It looks as if Team USA is really enjoying the experience. Dominic had such wonderful things to say. We're working on getting you that full interview on our YouTube page, but it was amazing to speak with her uh, about her experiences as well. Yeah, and she's such a pioneer. You think about, we talk about the Simone Biles and the Gabby Douglases, but she was yeah. kind of the blueprint for a lot of those girls. She said one of the major things that stuck with her from the Atlanta Olympics here wasn't the high of being on the podium, but was when there was a low, when she didn't do her best or, or mm -hmm. what felt like could have been her best. And she says that that has stuck with her and helped her to ascend to the heights that she has yeah. post Olympics. So yeah. it was really a I great can't wait to see that full interview. Yeah. It's going to be great. All right. Well, today at the Atlanta History Center, the MLB hosted 44 elite high school baseball players for the Hank Aaron Invitational Cultural Day. So the players took part of an exhibit. They toured it. Uh, it's called More Than a Brave, The Life of Henry Aaron. And they also participated in a conversation with Ambassador Andrew Young, former baseball player Dusty Baker, and Billy Aaron, his late wife, or his wife. Uh, the, they also spoke on Hank Aaron's life and his legacy to the next generation of baseball players. Following their visit to the exhibit, the players also will play a special showcase game at Truist Park. So that'll be special. The city of Atlanta, their council honoring Reverend Dr. Toussaint King Hill Jr. today with a street renaming ceremony. Hill was the assistant pastor at the historic Ebenezer Baptist Church and cousins with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. The two preached similar messages of civil rights and love for others. His sons shared how special naming the street after their father truly is. Just say you get off I-20 and you turn left on Lowry, or you turn right on Abernathy, mm -hmm. or you go down MLK to get to where you're going, or you're going down Hosea Drive. Mm -hmm. and now we can say you can turn left on Tucson Place. But sometimes you really have to take the time to appreciate why these streets were named after those folks. And for my dad to now have this street named after him, it really puts in perspective all he's done in life. The new street will be named Dr. Toussaint King Hill Play, uh, Jr. Place. Well, it is not August, or it's just August. We're just at the very beginning of the month, but it's never too early to get into the Christmas spirit. In fact, the queen of Christmas herself, Mariah Carey, is already making plans for the holiday. She's announced today that she is hitting the road for a Christmas tour with a stop right here in Atlanta. Mark your calendar. She will be at State Farm Arena on Saturday, November 23rd. The tour is in celebration of the 30-year anniversary of her Merry Christmas album and popular song, All I Want for Christmas is You. You can purchase pre-sale tickets starting August 6th and general ticket sales start on August 9th. I gotta say, I have seen a lot of Halloween decorations out in the store coming out, Jennifer, so I guess we are closer and closer to Christmas. <laughs> All right, doesn't feel like it though. It feels hot outside right now. Isolated showers and storms this evening and through the weekend. We'll keep highs in the low 90s Saturday and Sunday while we watch the tropics. As of now, it looks like the impacts from potential tropical cyclone four stay mostly east of our area. I've left a 30% rain chance in on Monday. Highs staying in the 90s. All right, Melissa, thanks so much. Before we go, we want to point out some programming changes here. Here. As you may know, the Olympics are preempting 11 Alive News weekdays and weekends. And while the games are on TV, you can get the latest on big local stories and weather 24-7 through our streaming app, 11 Alive Plus. This weekend, we will stream each morning at 8 a.m. Then we're back on the air at 6 p.m. 
And again, for 11 Alive news at 11 following Olympics in prime time. And 11 Alive is also still watching dozens of athletes from Georgia competing. Our Cheryl Preheim and Faith Jesse are in Paris telling their stories. Their reports will be featured during our two Olympic specials airing Monday through Saturday. The All Access Pass is at 7 p.m., followed by Olympic Zone at 7.30. And there is certainly a lot to watch. We know track and field are just yeah. getting started over in Paris. It's going to be great. So keep it here. We have a lot more for you. Have a great weekend.